Jasper and Horace Baden are two crooks who serve as secondary antagonists in the 101 Dalmatians. They are hired by Cruella de Vil to kidnap, kill, and skin a large quantity of Dalmatian puppies, so she can make a coat out of their fur. They provide a lot of comic relief, so to lighten the naturally rather sinister plotline. I've been thinking. You've been thinking? Now look here, Horace, I warned you about thinking. I've got the knob for this job, so let's get on with it. In the original book, written in 1956 by Dodie Smith, Horace's name was Saul. This was possibly changed to make him sound less grand and similar in tone to Jasper's name. As they only appear in a couple of the chapters, their personalities are much more fleshed out in the film adaptations, all of which have been produced by Disney. Do you hear that? What? That noise. What noise? That noise I just heard. Oh yeah! Yeah, it sounded just like a complete burp asking me irritating questions. Horace is shown to have much more of a conscience than his partner in crime, though this is really just due to a fear of being arrested, and fear of the very anti-RSPCA Cruella de Vil. He also has the trope of, despite seeming considerably dumber than his colleague, unbeknownst to either of them, either. he is usually right. But what if they went down the froze up creek so as not to leave their tracks? I think that bulldog knows what we just done. Maybe the puppies are still upstairs and they just tricked us into coming down here. Come on now, Horace. Dogs ain't that smart. The two are introduced in the novel as very unidentical brothers due to their different shapes and facial features. In Disney's animated adaptation, produced five years after Smith's book was published, although the two still vary in size, they have the exact same faces and wear the same clothing, only coloured differently. Hey, Jasper. Did you... Uh... Jasper was voiced by resident Disney voice actor J. Pat O'Malley, who was also Colonel the Shaggy Sheepdog. Horace was voiced by Frederick Warlock. They are referred to a couple of times by their surname. Watch out for the Badens. Badens? Those two blocks. It's the Badens! Which, for audience who know nothing of the novel, can easily assume to be a word in the animal kingdom for villainous slime. They are also said to be the caretakers of Hell Hall, but in the film they are professional burglars, and it seems that this may be their first time working for Cruella. There they go, Horace Millan. Out for their evening constitutional. We are not shown, or rather told, the events of the puppy's theft in the original story, but in the Disney movie, this is our intro to Jasper, Horace, and their rickety van. When their claim of being electricians still doesn't gain them access to the Radcliffe's house, they push past humanised Mrs. Potts, and Jasper locks her in the attic a.k.a. Roger's studio, while Horace gathers up the puppies. Cute little guppies, and take them away. A day or so later, they try to duck out of the job due to the theft making the headlines, and even offer to take only half of what Cruella promised to pay them, which she refuses to do. I don't like it, Jasper. I... Ah, shut up, you idiot! What? Oh, oh no, not you, miss! The puppy's parents use the twilight bark to locate the location of their children, who are being kept at Hell Hall, an abandoned mansion, under the unwatchful eye of the Baddens, and in the company of 84 other Dalmatians that Cruella bought. I don't care how you kill the little beast, but do it! And do it now! Oh, please, miss, now have pity, will you? Can't we see the rest of the show first? The villainess orders the lazy looters to remove the puppy's fur immediately, and despite the force of her gentle persuasion techniques, Jasper refuses to do it until after their favourite programme finishes. A parody of What's My Line. During this, the puppies are rescued by Sergeant Tibbs, who in the book was female and named Lieutenant Tib Pussywillow. 
The Baddens manage to stop the puppies before they can escape the mansion, but just as they are about to attack them, they are attacked by Pongo and Perdita. Come on, Oris, old pal! Give up what for! I'm right behind you, lad! Woo! They chase after the Dalmatians and have their bottoms broken by the captain. Fire too! Here is where the Baddens are last mentioned in the book, but instead of getting the Edgar treatment, their legs are chewed upon by the Colonel. In the film, they continue tracking down the puppies under the freezing conditions, with the knowledge that if they don't, they'll surely be roasted alive by Cruella. Do you suppose they disguise themselves? Say now, Horace, that's just what they did. Dogs is always painting themselves black. Yo, idiot! The film concludes with a very intense chase between a furniture van containing over a hundred dogs, a pasty nutcase in a luxury motor car, and two nincompoops in a decrepit truck. Give me the wheel, just Give me the wheel! Kaboom! You fools! Oh, you the fate of the villains is just as open here as it is in Dodie Smith's novel, as not only are they not shown or said to be arrested, but we aren't even informed if the police, or anyone besides the Canine Kingdom, know Cruella and the Baddens are guilty of attempted doggy side. In 1996, Disney made a live-action adaptation of The 101 Dalmatians, which was only the second time they did this before it became their trend 20 years later. Assuming you count the 1994 Jungle Book since when compared to their 2016 Jungle Book, it was barely a faithful adaptation of their movie or Rudyard Kipling's original stories. This version, starring Glenn Close, differed in several ways from their cartoon version made 35 years earlier and the book. The biggest example is that the animal's barks are not translated into English for us, which may give it a more realistic feel, but also loses part of the humour, such as the dogs referring to their owners as their pets. Do not look at the horrendous scar on his neck. Oh! Look at the size of that scar! The comical crooks were played by Hugh Laurie and Mark Williams. Once again, it isn't revealed whether they share the same mother. This time, it seems clear that they are recurring suppliers of illegally acquired fur to Cruella de Vil, though what they are earning out of it besides fueling a woman with an unhealthy obsession with animal skin isn't made clear. Well, what a beautiful day, ma'am. Blue skies, birds singing. Laughter of school children riding on gentle Get breezes. on with it, you imbecile! The question of did Cruella arrive at the house of the night of the puppy's birth by chance or by knowledge is answered for us here, as she sent Horace and Jasper to spy. Good evening, madam. And here we go. Only this time with stockings, and a bag kept up Horace's backside. Then they stroll out of the house without covering their faces and saying each other's names in front of a witness. Between the theft and the rescue, the Baddens don't get to watch their favourite programme, as this hellhole doesn't have a TV. However, they do have a pool table and a pool. There is a fourth member of the villain's team this time, not counting Cruella's darling butler. It's Captain Darling to you. A Mr. Skinner, who unlike the others, does have a legitimate reason for wanting to murder animals. When he was quite young, this dog tore open his throat and ripped out his vocal cords. Since they don't have What's My Crime to distract them, the boys play Knock Knock with Woody Woodpecker, and rock out with the raccoons. You can run with us. <laughs> this movie was written by John Hughes, so the following sequence of Horace and Jasper pratfalling in their pursuit of the puppies could very easily have been rejected gags from Home Alone. Good evening. What are you doing up there? Hello. Where are the puppies? Blue skies. 
Get down from there and get those puppies! Good evening. The search begins, but this time Horace and Jasper must travel on foot as the animals set their van's heater to volcano. Tracks! I love you. Slight overreaction, considering even if they find them, they have absolutely no way of capturing and transporting 99 puppies back to Hell Hall. I am shocked. The next morning, the Baddens are spotted by the police, and as they have been staggering around the frozen forest all night, and are still a bit dizzy from the Havotage. They are pretty pleased about being arrested. They were replaced by Gerard Depardieu in the movie sequel, made four years later. Perhaps because they had been asphyxiated at the end of the first movie. However, they did appear in the video game of 102 Dalmatians, which was about as faithful an adaptation as your average Disney film is to its subject's original source. Boy, I love this show. It proves how the rich is just like us. Except for the fact that they got money. Yeah, but I bet there's not one of them can eat popcorn with his feet. From 1997 to 1998, Horace and Jasper were recurring semi-minor characters in the cartoon TV series Dalmatians 101. Just kidding, they kept the usual title. The series differs greatly from all previous versions of the scenario. It takes place on a farm in America rather than in London, England, and Cruella's evil deeds involve wanting to become richer by stealing the farm Roger and Anita own. The show's main characters are three of the puppies and a chicken. Featured in less than half of the 65 episodes, most of which were split into two 10-minute stories, Horace and Jasper are two incompetent handymen rather than moronic baddies. Their voices were provided by David L. Lander Squiggy. and Michael McKean. You are fired! Uh, do you mean fired till tomorrow or fired till Tuesday? <laughs> She's kind of riled up this time. We better stay fired till next Thursday. Cruella, whose updated design and more comedic personality might have been the inspiration for Yzma, Demo to myself. See to it that Valentine's Day is wiped off the calendar. Merry Christmas, everyone! Here, have a photocopier! Occasionally hires them to help carry out her schemes. An element of humour and adorableness that hasn't been used in any of this story's other sources is that Horace has a crush on Nanny. <laughs> In 2003, Disney produced a sequel to the original film, 101 Dalmatians 2 Patches London Adventure. Jasper and Horace make their entrance halfway into the movie, where we see that the Baddens were arrested along with their mistress, who has been granted parole. And right from the start of the pair's chatter, it is finally confirmed whether the two are supposed to be brothers or not. Must be mum come to spring us. Mum never liked me. Must be good old dad. Dad never liked you either. This time they are voiced by Jeff Bennett and Maurice LaMarche. The family of Dalmatians and their pet humans are finally getting round to doing what they decided they needed to do and move to a farm, using the money Roger earned from creating that catchy melody about every animal's nightmare. Cruella bails them out of jail, so once again she can hire them to do some dog napping, so that an artist she admires can use their fur to create more black and white themed art. Jasper is forced to wear a dress and wig to get the attention of a dog biscuit van driver, which he and Horace use to lure the puppies with. And even though he not only hates wearing it, but also doesn't need to wear it anymore, he still wears the Shirley Temple disguise throughout this scene. In our lady, we don't want to have to hurt you none, so... A quick fight and chase sequence ensues, which is truly 100% less epic than the Napoleon and Lafayette vs. Edgar scene. Where'd you come from? Get out of here, you stupid mutt! Once Patch escapes from his cage by simply pouncing against the cage door, which apparently none of his 98 brothers and sisters thought of doing, 
They sneak past the Baddens, who are cosplaying as Wallace from the second half of The Wrong Trousers. What are you looking for? Nothing, Mum. We haven't lost the doggies or anything. The villains race after the puppies, who are driving off in a vintage London bus. Yeah, boo snubs! The antagonists are defeated, the puppies are saved, and the film ends with a series of newspaper headlines thrown at us during the credits, showing that Lars the artist declared a canvas of splattered paint caused by Jasper and Horace to be a work of art, and another tells us that the Baddens have apparently been spared from a jail sentence and opened a ladies' clothes shop. The presence of the two seems overall pointless, as they added very little to this okay-at-best sequel. While they did reluctantly help Cruella, she seems determined enough and mad enough to have stolen the puppies herself. It's alright, lady. We're professionals. Jasper and Horace have been left out of the fairy tale based TV drama series Once Upon a Time. Which, even though Cruella was in, isn't too surprising, as 101 Dalmatians is one of the very few Disney products that does not involve magical elements, nor does it take place prior to the 20th century. A Maleficent-style origin story involving Cruella is being considered for production, where I'm sure Jasper and Horace will be involved. How'd you like a tabby cat stew? <laughs> or a cat casserole? <laughs> Their best appearance is, of course, the original film, and out of the numerous reasons for why it is better than its live-action remake and its animated sequel, the fact I'm settling for is... Gotta love dat rickety truck. In conclusion, this is Jeffrey Kitch saying... I bet you know where the puppies are!